The next interview is with Gloria R. Paul. Hello, this is Wendy Bennett from the Bayport Blue Point Library. We are here today on Thursday, May 23rd, 2013 with Gloria R. Paul. She has been a resident of Bayport for 69 years. Welcome, Gloria. Thank you. So, Gloria, let's start by telling everyone your full name. Gloria Judith Renard Paul. And when and where were you born? I was born in Jamaica, New York. And where have you lived throughout your life, Gloria? I guess we went directly to New Hyde Park, New York. And from there we went to Holbrook. That's where I started school when they didn't have kindergartens. And then from Holbrook, we went to Hicksville, New York, and then to Bayport. Okay. And do you know why your family finally moved to Bayport? My father was out of work. He was a contractor, and he got caught up in the Depression and lost all of the jobs that he was supposed to do because nobody had money to pay for the work to be done. And he had a family to support. He had four children. And uh, so he left and brought us out to Holbrook, where there was practically nothing, until the WPA under Franklin Roosevelt put a lot of the men that were contractors or carpenters or in the building trade to work. And so that did help, but not really enough, because he and my mother Oh, it was at that time that they had split up and he went somewhere else to live in the South somewhere. And that was it. Hmm. All right. And what high school did you attend? Hicksville High School and Bayport High School. And when did you start going to Bayport High School? In 1944, the year that I moved to Bayport. That was my senior year. That must have been difficult for you. It was. I didn't know what to expect from the kids. I had, when we had moved to Hicksville, I got the cold shoulder, but I was only in the fourth grade then. And, but it, it, it just stuck in my mind. Oh, I hope the people in Bayport aren't that way. And they weren't. They were so practically open, open their arms to me, you know. And I thought, oh, this is a great place to live. And it was. Good. And it still is. So tell me about the jobs that you have had. Well, when I was still in high school in Bayport, uh, another girl and I uh, had a part-time job after school and on Saturdays in Woolworths in Patchogue. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't much of a job, and I certainly didn't expect to be doing that kind of work all my life. I wanted, I really wanted to be an attorney, but I knew I couldn't go to college. There wasn't any money for that. And so that was out of the picture. But I thought, well, I'm going to take a commercial course all the way through high school to get me started the typing and the shorthand and the office practice and that sort of thing. And I did do that. And I was able to uh, find a job in neighboring Sable. Mm. And, uh, of course, I did a lot of babysitting work and part-time secretary to a, uh, a, an insurance agent in Seoul. One thing after the other, you know, it was spotty until I found this job with an attorney in Seoul. Mm -hmm. I was so glad to get it because he was the kind of a man that liked to uh, uh, talk about legal work and the legal work particularly that he was doing in his office and he wanted to clue me in as to what to expect uh, in the way of whatever was facing him, whether it be a sale of a real estate or that sort of thing. Because he didn't do any criminal work, he'd always refer people to another attorney that did that kind of work. So he knew what he was doing there. And he was the kind that liked to talk to me about what we were facing in the office. And he, uh, he rather schooled me into the real estate transaction business, what has to happen 
uh, what gets recorded in Riverhead, the county clerk's office, and why it's recorded there and why some things aren't recorded there mm. and all the ins and outs about it. And I, I thanked him for it. And uh, I worked for him for six years. And then he suddenly died. And uh, so I helped the attorney that was settling his estate. Mm. And after that estate was settled, I had to look for another need or don't need. I found uh, the, uh, you know what to do about all of these forms that to be recorded. Why don't you find another attorney? So I did, and that was good. And finally found my way into Riverhead, hmm. where they do the title searching, because I knew what had to be done. This man told me all about that, and I, I found the work terribly interesting. And then when the Historic Society started in Bayport, I was part of that. Hmm. And uh, they wanted to know who owned this kind of property first, th the earliest owner. And I knew how to find that out it's through the records in the county clerk's office. And I fe felt very good about that because everybody was so, so pleased about my discovery. Nobody had known about a lot of those things. And so it went. And um, then, well, I guess that was pretty much it until someone that works in the county clerk's office said to me, you know, you're so good at going back these generations on the own, specific owner of the property. There's people that come into the county clerk's office and they have an idea that we'll do that search for them, the people that work in the county clerk's. And she said, you know, we don't do that ourselves. We can tell them what, how to do it, but that takes too long and nobody wants to take up their time to do that. Why don't you do it? If somebody comes in and wants to know. I tell you, particularly people that own old antique houses, mm. they are the ones that want you to go back as far as you can to find out who was the original, who maybe built it. And uh, where did it go from the original owner? Did he die before he sold it? And maybe his heirs sold it, you know. So I did do that for a while and got paid for it. And uh, I, I enjoyed every minute of it. Hmm. I, I really, really did. It was my thing. It's the closest I ever got to being an attorney, because hmm. that's what the attorneys do. Hmm. So that was it. Hmm. Now, before the interview, you were telling me a very interesting story of how you met your husband. Can you tell everyone about that? Well, sure. I have nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. What do you want me to know? Well, you showed me the two photos of you and your husband, and they look like movie stars. <laughs> so how did that photo of your husband come about? Well, he was a very handsome man. And the photographer next door to the law office where I worked, he came in one day and said to me, I tell you, there's a guy that came in to see me. He said, he's a friend of mine. He says, I have to admit that, but he's some great looking guy. And he said, the next time he comes in, I'm gonna bring him next door to meet you. I said, that's a good idea. So he did, he brought Ernie in and I don't know, clip like that between the two of us and before you know it we were married mm -hmm. and you know the funny thing about it I said to him where do you live he said in Bohemia and I said where is that mm -hmm. now remember I'm in Bayport I'm working in Sable but I had the faintest mm -hmm. idea how to get to Bohemia where he lived I'd never been there before mm -hmm. He said, you don't know. Well, I have to bring you up to meet my mother and father. And my br my oldest brother is home. The other two aren't home. They're married and off. But uh, 
uh, that was it. So he took me out to meet his mother and father and the older the brother and the other brother. And that, that was it. We eventually married and produced two children. It's such a long time ago. Mm, yeah. yeah. Now, you mentioned that you didn't know where Bohemia was or how uh, to get there. I, I had no idea. <laughs> Did people no... back then really stay in their hometowns? Yes, I think they pretty much did, except for the war, mm -hmm. the war effort, you know, and uh, those that were drafted for that. And my husband was in the Korean conflict. Mm -hmm. But, of course, I knew him at that time, and someone said to me, you know, if you marry him, they're not going to enlist him because he's married. I said, well, we're not married, and I'm not going to live with that for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. We're not married. I'm not going to give him an excuse for not doing what his country wants him to do. No, I'm not going to do that. So then I told my husband what Larry, that's his brother, said, and he said, you know damn well I would never do that. So he did go into the service in the Korean War, and when he came home on leave, that's when we married. Mm. So I, he could never say, nobody could ever say I kept him out of the <laughs> service. That would not be me. Mm. Now speaking of wars, uh, through the years, how do you think large historical events like wars or large storms have affected Bayport? You know, that, what was it, 1938 hurricane? Mm. I was not in Bayport at that time. Mm. I lived in Hicksville at that time. And Hicksville was not damaged at all. So I don't know what it did to Bayport, but we've had many, many storms. As a matter of fact, where I live now, which is in the house that my husband built on Academy Street, uh, directly across the street is a road that goes directly south. And it seems every storm that comes up, that comes from the south or the southwest, even the southeast, it comes up that coal court, that's the name of the road, across the street. and it will come directly into my driveway. Ooh. And I've lost so many trees as a result. As a matter of fact, the fire department complains about their property and what all of these storms has done to them from the wind and whatever else, rain, the tornadoes, or sometimes they don't even call it a tornado. We call it that. Mm. but. Uh, I've lost so many trees, and the most recent one completely destroyed my automobile. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Uh, the trees came down. One went directly through the windshield and mm -hmm. out through the, the, well, not completely out, but through the rear window in the car. The hood was had holes in it from the trees falling to... It was what a mess. Mm. It's it's really traumatic, and I'm sure that, that since I've been living there, it was uh, it happened before. If it happened to me, and it happened so many times, you know, it's the same thing. The fellows up at the fire department said the same thing. Mm. They can feel it because they all flock to the firehouse. You know, when there's a big storm coming. And they, they know where it comes from. They know the feel of it. I don't like a storm coming, mm. not, not just for me, but for anybody. Mm. Okay. Well, going back to when you were in high school for that one year in Bayport, and then when you were in your 20s, do you remember any summer activities? Uh, swimming. Oh, yeah. I love to swim. Mm -hmm. I love to swim. And, of course, when I was in high school... The war was still raging, mm. and uh, I was a cheerleader in Hicksville. And when I came to Bayport, I was again a cheerleader. And the cheerleaders have to f follow the team, you know, and the basketball was the 
big thing in Bayport at that time. And uh, so you would take a train. There were no buses to take us anyplace. Gas was rationed, mm. or supposed to be. Sometimes people could get it rationed or not. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. Uh, anyway, we'd get on a train, and we'd go to... I remember going to Babylon once in Lindenhurst another time. And there's a lot of equipment you have to take with you. Oh, cool. And I said to Coach Vignato, who was coach for the girls too, I want to carry some of that equipment. But you're a girl, I've got plenty of men here. I said, they're supposed to be playing basketball. They don't want to be. He said, you don't know boys. They could carry their big, strong, healthy guys. <laughs> I, I want to carry something. So he gave me something light to carry, and we'd get out of the train at Babylon or Lindenhurst, wherever it was, and I'm carrying this thing, and we have to walk to this, the other high school, and I'm <laughs> carrying it. I didn't realize how far it was. And he said, you want me to get one of the guys to get? No, well, I'm, I, I will do it, you know, <laughs> and I did. Yeah. There you go. You said you would, and you did. Well, exactly. I'm a person of my word. And do you remember listening to any type of music? Yeah. I, I loved the ballads, and I loved the swing. Mm. If, if you could dance to the swing. I mean, some of the swing was so fast, nobody could dance to it. But, you know, there was a slow swing and a fast swing. The slow swing, the swing you could dance to. That's why I liked so much the Sugar Bowl when I was in Bayport. You know where the Sugar Bowl was? No. Shall I tell you? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, th that's a place. It's on the North Road. I still call it the North Road, you know. Mm. Uh, Montauk Highway. It's, it's where the animal clinic is. Mm where if you were on Snedeker Avenue, if you went straight through, you'd go right through where that animal hospital is. That used to be the Sugar Bowl. And uh, everybody con uh, congregated there because there was a jute box mm -hmm. and a great big wide wooden floor uh, to dance in. And I loved to dance. Everybody seemed to love to dance. Mm -hmm. And you put your nickel or dime or quarter even and you have selection and you know you put in a dime and maybe get two selection I put in a dime and I'd get two and so there was always music there and somebody was always dancing and that's what I like to do mm. so I like going to the sugar bowl mm. I'd imagine that was very popular oh yes oh yeah that's where you met a lot of your friends. Mm. Because there weren't too many ple places you could really go to. Mm. You know, that, that was the, the hangout yeah. in a good way. Do you remember any foods in your family that were cooked for special events or celebrations? Well, we always had turkey on the holidays, I know that. Mm. And in the summer... We had hamburgers and hot dogs. I, oh, I have to tell you about it. I had a date with a fellow, and we went to the movies in Panchog, and then he took me to Flo's here in Blue Point, and he said to me, would you like a cheeseburger? And I said, a what? And he said, a cheeseburger. And I said, well, what is that? Didn't know what it was. Yeah. Didn't know what a cheeseburger was at that time. Don't ever remember having a cheeseburger when I lived in Hicksville. We had hamburgers. Mm. And he said, it's a hamburger with a slice of cheese on it. Well, I mean, that's pretty simple. But when you haven't had it or think you'd never had it, mm. uh, it's not very simple. It's, you have to explain this to me, you know. So that's what he did soon. Then I knew what a cheeseburger was, and that was down at Flo's. So that was... And did you have the cheeseburger? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you liked so, it? Yeah. Oh, yes. I, I certainly did. Mm. Okay, so let's focus specifically on Bayport now. Well, you know, I love pathways. Mm. 
And there's a pathway in Bayport. It's just really, you can't use it anymore. It was a pathway from the South Road, which I found out accidentally. It's not called the South Road, which is another thing. When we moved here, we had family friends that had lived here for a long time. And they kept talking about the South Road. And I thought they meant the road that runs through the village. They did. But that's not the name of that road. It's Middle Road. Mm. But they they never mention Middle Road. So I'm on Middle Road, and I see the sign on Bayport Avenue corner, and it said Bayport Avenue and Middle Road. And I, I need an explanation. And I knew Pete Menz. He worked for Doc Neveloff in his pharmacy, which was in Bayport. Mm. And there was a soda fountain in there, and Pete pretty much took care of the soda fountain. And when when I saw that sign, I thought, I asked not now. Irene, that's the daughter of the family friend, told me this road is the South Road. I'm going to go ask him. So I went in to the pharmacy, and Pete was there, and I said to him, Irene tells me this road is the South Road. Now I see the sign says Middle Road. Will you explain that to me? He said, Middle Road is the proper name, but everybody calls it the South Road. Colloquialism, I suppose you (laughs) might call it. (laughs) Well, I'm glad you told me that. Now I'm going to have to tell her that, you know. So I told her that. She said, I never heard it called Middle Road. I said, you never looked at the street sign. (laughs) I never heard of that. But anyway... On Middle Road, there is a little pathway that used to wind its way. This pathway was east of the the Howell buildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, just east of that, maybe 50 feet, there was a pathway that led up to the south end of Kensington Avenue. And I lived on Kensington Avenue. And so you walk through this little path, being careful not to step in the swamp, which was to the east a little bit. And you'd get up to the road, and then you'd have clear walking to get home. Save time, rather than walk down Bayport Avenue sidewalk. And uh, so that, I like paths. But there's no path that is as beautiful to walk in, and I love pathways than the one that they used to call Shan's Path. Mm. Shan's Path started on the east side of Snedeker Avenue, south of Academy Street. I'm not sure just where it started, but south of Academy Street on the east side. And it wound through the woods. There's nothing but woods there. Mm. And... A man by the name of James Wilson Young owned all of this woodland, and he loved the woods like I love the woods. And uh, he would never sell it to anybody. And he died still owning it, Hmm. leaving it to his wife. She wouldn't sell it either. And she left it to somebody, and that's when it got sold and Cole Court started up, you know. And that was the end of the woods. But to walk through that woods was really beautiful. Yeah. You never knew what you were going to find. There was there was a plant that you'd find in the springtime, depending upon the weather. And it was a lady slipper. Yeah. You know, it's not a lady shoe, but a <laughs> lady slipper. It was a forest plant, you know. It, it was endangered then, and now I'm, I'm sure it's extinct because there's so few woods around. Mm. And uh, But it was absolutely beautiful to see, mm. and uh, you'll never see it again, mm. I guess. Now, uh, you mentioned James P. Wilson Young. Yes. Isn't a school named after him? Yes, mm. it certainly is, the middle school, oh. and he was on the Board of Education. And uh, he lived, I think he was an attorney, and he lived on the corner of Folger Street and uh, Bayport Avenue. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's where he lived. Mm. And he loved that woods, too. Mm. You know what he used to do? When, when we had a bad storm and some of the branches on the big trees were down, he'd go in there and cut them up. And he would leave the... I guess he didn't have a fireplace. I don't know. But he'd leave the logs that he had cut up right at the edge of Academy Street with a sign, pick them up. And so before you know it, somebody did pick them up and take, take them home, mm-hmm. you know. And he wanted to neaten up the woods, I guess. And what is your earliest memory of Bayport? Well, I tell you, I was surprised to find that the South Road wasn't really called the South <laughs> Road, even though to this day I, I call it the South, South Road. Road. Mm-hmm. And that surprised me no end. Mm. No end. Isn't that a silly thing? (laughs) Well, we've talked a little bit about some of the places in Bayport that stand out the most in your mind. Were there any other stores or gathering places that stand out to you? Well, I know there were gin mills, but, you know, I wasn't... I I did go to one gin mill with with an older couple... And that was the Manhattan House. Because they told me that they have a nice big dance floor there. Yeah. It wasn't big. But I, I went anyway. They seemed to think I should go. So so what? You know, I know what I was doing. But I, I can tell you about something that happened in school that really, this one fellow, he really surprised me. As I'd never seen it done by a high school kid before. His name was Chuck Crampton. And his mother was one of the teachers in the school. And there was another boy whose name was Herb Champlin. So we've got Herb Champlin and Chuck Crampton. And Herb had some debilitating disease. Mm. And from what the kids told me, he had gotten progressively worse over the years to the point that he had a lot of difficulty making the stairway. And Chuck Crampton seemed to take it upon himself to be at Herb's side and let him know, I'm here for you, to help you up and down the stairs. And he was there, let me tell you, he'd race out of the classroom if if Herb didn't wait for him. I guess Herb must have been the kind of guy, well, I can do it myself. Well, he was... You know, he did need help. So Chuck was always there for him, up and down the stairs or wherever. And I thought that was wonderful, Mm, just just wonderful. Mm. Yeah, that's one thing I remember. But everybody was so, so pleasant to me Mm. when I entered. And Elvira Hingle, she was the secretary to Mr. Lewis, who was the principal of the school, the the entire school, and she took me up to the classroom. This is before school started, and everybody was in there already, and I thought, oh boy, I hope I'm not going to get the brush off like I had when I entered Hicksville High. Well, I didn't. Everybody turned around, you know, because we're standing in the doorway there, and she's talking to Mrs. Potter, who was the homeroom teacher and anyway they turned around to see who she was bringing in it was me and they're all more or less smiling Mm. or you know and I thought oh boy and that's the way the class was Mm. that's nice to hear I I just felt so comfortable Mm. and that's the way it was and and uh, before you know it I had made friends and one of the girls two of the girls and that, so that made three of us. We had gotten this part-time job. Did I tell you about that? In Woolworths oh, yes. in Patchogue, mm-hmm. while we were still seniors. And, you know, whenever we were off school and before we graduated, we could go in and work in Woolworths in Patchogue. But I didn't want to do that the rest of my life. So mm. eventually I, I, I did get with an attorney mm. and uh, in... Sable. Mm. And from there I learned so many things that Mm. helped me through the years and 
accomplishing whatever I could, knowing that I could never get a degree in anything. Mm. Although somebody said to me, don't ever say you can't get a degree. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think was most important to the people in Bayport? Jobs. Mm. So many people didn't have jobs. Mm. There was a Mr. Meachow who lived, who lived diagonally across from me on Kensington. He had a job of picking up the mail at the at the railroad tracks and taking it down to Mr. Oh, Lord, what, what was his name? Did I give you his name, the postmaster's name? I think you mentioned it before. I don't recall uh, it, though. I, I, yeah, I th but anyway, that's what Mr. Meachow did. I, I'm afraid I don't know much about whatever anyone else did, as I know a lot of people didn't even have jobs. Mm. There was somebody across the street that took the train into the city, but I don't know what he did. So many people did keep them to themselves. Now, speaking of trains, do you remember the train station in Bayport? Yes. Do you remember being inside it? Yes. What was it like? Well, I don't, I don't think that it was anything spectacular when you compare it with the train stations in Jamaica. Mm. You know, I, I don't remember anything about what was inside. I don't even remember that there was a station master there. Mm. I mean, I'm not saying there wasn't. I just don't remember don't him. Remember. Do you remember when the station closed in Bayport? Yeah, and how sorry so many people were. Mm. Yeah, they weren't quite sure how they were going to get. It's surprising how many people did work in New York City from Bayport. I don't know what they did, whether they went to Sable and picked up the train there. I don't know. I never asked any of them. Do you remember any great stories or legends about Bayport? I wish I did. Yeah. I have not heard any legend or any great stories either. All right. I would love to know some of them. Have you had people talk about that? Um, some, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the library for the moment. Do you have any memories of the library? Well, I wasn't here when it opened, mm. so I, 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 I can't tell you anything about that. Did you ever go to it when you moved Oh, yeah, here? sure. So many things in, in school, you had to use the library, whether you wanted to or not, for reading purposes. Mm. But it had to do with the curriculum you were taking. So you had no choice but to go to the library to find out that information, mm. unless you had a set of encyclopedias. Mm. And how up to, to date are they? Mm. Not really. So your school didn't have a library inside? Well, yes, but, you know, how big was it? Mm. I, I, I don't know. Uh, were you active in any local churches? Yes, Our Lady of the Snow, the Catholic Church. Mm. In Blue Point, and whatever sales that they were having, I sometimes helped with the selling. But certainly, if I didn't do that, then I, I remember they had a lot of plant sales, mm. and uh, so I would buy that, or my family would buy a plant from the church. Now you mentioned you were active in the Heritage Association. In the what? Yes. Uh, can you tell us a little more about that? Well, everybody had a different job to do, really, and my job was to get to the county clerk's office in Riverhead, mm -hmm. and I had a lead on some, some of the properties in Bayport, but we knew that they were older than the lead that showed that perhaps one family owned it in, say, 1860. Well, who owned it before that? The house was older than that. Mm. Well, they didn't know, so as long as I had that deed could, to go by, I could go backwards in Riverhead uh, and uh, discover who owned it, mm. you know. And perhaps even sometimes a deed would indicate that there was a house in the process of being built on it. Mm. And that was interesting yeah. to them, too, so mm -hmm. they could document document the uh, age of the home, the structure. Mm. So that worked out nicely. Mm. 
And that was documented in the first book that the Heritage put out having to do with the homes in Bayport. Mm. I guess a lot of that information, too, was in the second book. Were you active in any other organizations? I'll tell you, I knitted during the war. I, I loved to knit mm -hmm. since I was a little tot. And they wanted sweaters for the veterans. And some of the veterans were hospitalized or in re what you, rehabilitation places, and they needed something warm. Mm -hmm. And the Red Cross was asking for people that knew how to knit and had the time to do it. Well, you know, I had time at night. Uh, you know, I wasn't always at the sugar bowl and, uh, to knit, and I loved to knit too. And so I did uh, knit for the Red Cross. So thinking about Bayport when you first moved here to now, what would you say is the biggest change that you've seen? House numbers. Yeah. How so? Well, how so? I'll tell you. I came from Hicksville, and of course, Hicksville is a larger town, and it's in Nassau County. Mm. They have postal delivery. They have house numbers, of course. We had nothing here. So some of the friends that I had made in, in Hicksville wanted to come out and visit with me, and one of the guys had a car, and he's going to take some girls and some guys with him and come out and we're going to get together. And he said, how am I going to reach you? I said, the only thing I can tell you is that I live on Kensington and you're going to have to knock on people's doors. What? <laughs> he said, don't you have a house number? I said, no, we don't. Why not? I said, I suppose because we don't have mail delivery. What's the point in giving a house a number if they don't have mail delivery? Mm. Well, you know, I, isn't that the only reason we have house numbers? I thought so, too. So we did a lot of corresponding by, well, not letters as much as the postcards, you know. So he finally found his way, and he did have to knock on people's doors and the girls are out there on one side of the street and a lot of people that lived on Kensington didn't even know us yet mm -hmm. so that if someone said where do the Renards live they didn't know who's the Renards you know <laughs> you felt that oh my lord in heaven what have I done here but they did finally find us mm -hmm. So that was the strange part of that, the funny. I thought it was funny, and just looking back on it at the time, I didn't. I was almost mortified. Mm. Here they'd come out to see me, and then they can't even find me, and <laughs> nobody knows me. And are you sure you live in Bayport? <laughs> Do you remember when they added house numbers? No, I don't. Mm. I don't remember when that happened. All right, um, so we've come to the end of our time, just about. But I just have two more questions for you. Okay. What do you miss the most about the way Bayport used to be? Everything. It's, that's all I can say. Mm. It's just everything. I loved the way it was. Mm. I even understood the way it was, mm. even though I didn't know the name of the streets. <laughs> and I loved the paths. Mm. Now there's no paths anywhere. Oh, uh, did, did I tell you one time my mother, I'm still in high school, and she said to me, now it was, it was either my sister or it was me that picked up the mail this particular day, depending upon our after-school activities. And that day, it was my day to go to the post office, so my mom said to me, before you go to the post office, you go to Shan's and you get a head of, now I don't remember whether she said lettuce or she said cabbage, but I, so I went to Shan's and I picked up whatever she said she wanted. And when I got home with it, she said, what is this? I said, it's what you told me to get at Shan's. She said, this is not lettuce or this is not cabbage, whatever she wanted me to get. 
I didn't get the right thing. I got the other thing, either cabbage or lettuce. So I said, really? He said, really? I said, well, it, it, Mom, it looks the same. They're both in a roll, in a ball, and they're both green. They look the same. And she said, not to me, they don't. <laughs> so there you go. I didn't know. And I'm a senior in high school, and I don't know the difference between cabbage and lettuce. I'm sure a lot of people didn't. <laughs> Well, you make me feel better, but I don't believe that. I think they're they're kidding you. Well, anyway, that's the way it was. I don't know what she made me do. Knowing my mother, she probably made me take it back and get what the other thing, the other one. This marks the end of the interview with Gloria R. Paul.